Hey, what's up guys? It's Pixelated Apollo. Thanks for stopping by and welcome back to another siege battle. This time we're in Britannia. Wonderful, wonderful expansion. Get to see some really cool factions that are, well, in the British Isles. And this one is a 1v1 and it kind of feels like this, this battle is already halfway through, but that's not the case. The defenders, they just gave up the first layer wall, so I thought it was really no point in showing you guys him shooting at the wall that's not even defended. So just pretend that this is the main castle here. This is the only wall that the defender gets to defend. So uh, let's just go ahead and start off by looking at the army comps. We'll start with the Norwegians that are currently taking some suppressing fire from the Welsh longbows or the Welsh bows over here. So here is his army commanded by Wombat, and this is a good army. You know, this is a kind of army that I would bring to a siege battle. I think this is a very, very sound army. The only thing that I would do different uh, is not bring two units of cav. I think one unit of cav, especially in a 1v1, and it's also pretty cool that we get to see a 1v1 because not a lot of people send in 1v1 siege battles and I think they're very very interesting in their own special way because it, there's no allies, it's all up to you, all strategy, so uh, yeah, should be, should be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So there's Norway, I think that's a very solid army. He has two artillery and he's barely used any of his ammo, that's right guys, he's only knocked down this one little section. This is why you must at least pretend to defend the outer wall, outer walls to make the attacker feel uncomfortable and make him feel like he has to bring down a bunch of walls before he can advance forward. Uh, but when you just leave the walls, all they have to do is knock down one section and they're good to go. He could have he could have even knocked down the gate, which only takes one volley, but I think he wanted to get his siege equipment inside, so that's why he took down the wall. Uh, but yeah, he's He's currently bombarding this wall. It should only take a couple more minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Welsh player. Now, here is a bunch of units that I have no idea how to pronounce. I am just not even going to try. I am sorry. My, my Gaelic is not very good. My Welsh... <laughs> Even my Welsh hist my knowledge of the Welsh history is not that great. I know a little bit between the wars between the English and the Welsh people, but uh, anyways, let's uh, let's just kind of look at the units and kind of just get an idea of what each unit is. He's got a lot of these spearmen. They are they're like feudal knights, but they've got kite shields and spears. They're actually pretty good in this expansion. I wouldn't say that they're the, they're the greatest at holding the line, but they're pretty solid. And let's see, what else? He's got some uh, more spearmen, just a lot of spearmen. He's bringing a lot of missiles too. Here's some missiles. And we have more spearmen. Just lots and lots of spearmen, guys. Uh, let's see. I know he's bringing like axemen. He's bringing some guns too. That's really cool. Um, let's see, more guns up there on top of the gates. Some more missiles. A lot of missiles, so that's good to see. I think that's always great for defense. He's bringing a couple cab units. So it's just like heavy cab, look like feudal knights. Here we go, here's the axeman. Yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce this. <laughs> Not even gonna pretend to try. Here's the general's bodyguard. And here, of course, is the general. And this is the true watermelon faction. I know we call the Hungarians the watermelon faction, but this is just straight up watermelon right here. This, that red and green, that is like candy watermelon. So what I'm gonna, oh actually, hold on guys, I think this one's starting. I was about to say, I'm gonna go ahead and start the, uh, the you know, the skip through this, this boring bombardment phase. But it looks like we might have an early attack by Norway. I, I don't think he's, I think he's being a little impatient here. Why go in when you have the advantage? Why go in when you can knock down more choke points and more towers? But look at this crazy, crazy volley from these missiles, putting down just a bunch of fire arrows upon the enemy, upon the attacking force. And here we go, we've got all the infantry charging in. Looks like he tried to charge in his scarls into the gate, but it just did not pay off. The oil came crashing down. You gotta be careful guys, in the expansion siege battles, gates have oil abilities. So uh, you can lose a lot of troops trying to take the gate. So I would try to avoid the gate in expansions. But look at this, here comes that long force, long professional force here of Shivert Knights, Feudal Knights, Gotland Footmen. He's still going in way too early. He's losing a lot of troops to the Archer Fire. And now we've got the guns in range. And look at those awesome shields on the back. They look 
they look fantastic. Let's see. Is, is he gonna just charge in like this? Is he just gonna non-stop charge in? This is definitely a big mistake here, guys. Big mistake. Always try to always try to use up all of your ammo before you charge in. Unless there's some situation where you can take advantage of the situation. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Haskarl's charging in into the choke point against these spearmen. Uh, their morale is already pretty pretty poor because all the fire arrows coming crashing down. They definitely need more support. We've got Gotland Footman charging in. Here they come. Gotland Footman to the rescue. <laughs> And uh, he is spamming a lot of units in this one section. That's never a good sign, but okay, smart move here. He's going to retreat his Gotland footman. And uh, now Wales is sending in some spearmen to help, extra spearmen to help hold this line against the dismount of his Carls. There goes the volleys from the artillery. Oh no, don't go through the gates. Oh, we're about to watch a lot of Shiver Knights burn to a crisp. Are you ready for this, guys? Oh no, and the spearmen are going to hold their ground. They're not going to let them budge. Oh, the oil. If Maybe maybe they have time before the oil recharges. <laughs> recharges and puts death upon them. Are the archers up here doing well? Getting a lot of kills. We need this choke point down. Bring down this wall. Bring it down. You need another point of entry. Also, you could have gone this way as well. It looks like, okay, okay. So he, he is knocking down this wall. It looks like he's got uh, something over here. He's got some artillery. Oh, he has a whole nother force over here. I did not see this, uh, but this is good to see. It's good to see that he's gonna try to break in through different ways. But this is going to be a very tough fight for Norway. Let's see if he's gonna be able to, to have the morale. To, uh, hopefully they can just break through not worry about breaking, you know, running away from the battle. If they can just push their way through, keep fighting, I'm pretty sure, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> the dismounted Shiver Knights will beat the uh, Spearmen here. We'll find out. We'll find out. It just, it looks that way, because, you know, Spears versus Sword. I'd much rather have a sword in a melee fight and a shield. That's, that's just more me. I don't know about you guys. But I prefer a sword rather than a spear. But yeah, they, they should still try to bring down this wall. Uh, the wall over here is about to crumble. 84%. It, wow, you know, Wales doesn't really have a force defending this side, but he is sending some forces this way. He's sending some spearmen. But this is a, a, another great example why you need choke points to spread your, to spread your enemy thin. Uh, as you can tell, he's got nothing defending here, and you could easily charge another two units into this area. But again, Norway not taking advantage of that little section. Is he out of ammo? Is he just maneuvering his artillery somewhere else? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but the oil is not coming down, so that's, that's pretty good. Hopefully I'm not a little too loud there. I'm sorry, I was a little too close to the mic. Uh, but it looks like he's tearing through the spearmen here and here comes a cav charge looks like uh, these Gotland footmen are cutting their way through they are just absolutely cutting their way through there's 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 little hope for these Welsh boys I don't know. I don't know. If they can break these troops over here, then they're going to have extra troops to hold this side of the fortress. Uh, let's hope that he can break break these Norwegians, but it doesn't look like they're going to break. They're at pretty low numbers, and they're still going pretty steady. They are shaking a little bit. Garland Footman doing their best. Fighting the Axemen off now. So Axemen versus Scotland Footman, an epic duel between two titans of a unit. <laughs> Oh man, that volley right over the heads of the the infantry, going after the Norse ac or Norse archers, excuse me. And here comes some cav support. Let's see where he's gonna send them. I don't think he can really send them anywhere. He's gonna try to go through the gate again. They need to really get through this gate. But here we go, guys. The Norwegians are pushing through, and they're gonna try to engage these uh, these spearmen. 
and they're gonna try to cut them down. Hopefully they can cut them down. Uh, but we need something defending over here. They're just, there's nothing. There's two units of spearmen. We do have some cav too, but what are they gonna do in, in long, you know, long melee battles against infantry units? Oh, oh no, the stakes are killing, oh, killing their own men. That is not good. Stakes are always a pain. That's why I prefer not to uh, deploy them because they're always a hassle. Sometimes you forget about the stakes and you just run your cav right into them. Uh, but this is a good position for these missiles. Trying to fire down at the units over here. And Norway is just slowly pushing his way in. Absolutely just pushing his way in. And here comes a glorious charge from the Welsh general. Boom. Oh, Norwegians are flying. But it, is it going to be enough? Where is the oil? The oil is just not coming down. Again, I don't really play expansions too much. I don't know exactly how the oil works. I, I'm pretty sure you use it and then it kind of recharges and then you can use it again. It's not like the player is pressing a button to use it. It happens just automatic. Uh, but all... All the, the Welsh player, all he has to do is hold right here. And if he can hold for a long enough time, defeat the Norwegians on this side, which seems a little difficult right now. But this is an epic brawl right here. I just love seeing all the different colors going at it. Red and blue versus uh, green and red. Fantastic. The general getting a good amount of kills. He needs to keep up the general charges there. Get him out of the melee. Keep him charging in. Here comes more uh, more heavy cav coming in. Uh, the, the archers are desperately trying to kill as many as they can. Uh, they do have a pretty easy shot right here. It's pretty point, not point blank, but a really good angle where they don't have to worry about friendly fire. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, so, oh, what's happening here? It looks like, oh, they're breaking through. The Welsh are breaking, the Norwegians are pushing through, and the numbers are crumbling over here. And there goes the general, I'm pretty sure that was the uh, the Welsh general. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that was him. I didn't even see him on the screen. Yeah, I don't see him in his unit, so he is dead. And here comes, here comes Norway. Knock, knock. It's Norway. <laughs> Where are you? Okay, here's my joke. Ready? Knock, knock. Who's there? Where are you going? I don't know. Norway. There you go. I am a comedian. I'll be here all night. No. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. I don't even know. If that doesn't even make sense. Gauntlet Flipman. About to cut down these archers. And we just have a mass chain route by the Welsh. And uh, the Norsh, the, the Norsh, <laughs> the Norsh, it's a mix of Norwegians and Welsh, the Norsh. Uh, but no, Norway is breaking through. All they have to do is cut down these archers, and they're not good in melee. They will die. That was a good volley, though. And they broke some of the Norse archers, but it's not going to be enough. Big battle in this courtyard. I love this siege environment. It is a great, a great siege. Uh, you know, like the the layout is pretty solid. I like this big courtyard always creates this intense pitch pitch like battle feeling Missile troops got their uh, wooden like little uh, hammers out And the volleys from the archers are pretty solid here I don't really see the the guns are really not firing and this is a problem that I see often with guns it just seems like they don't really get good volleys off from the walls I think he's better off just having them on the ground but here we go more more good volleys from the archers but is it gonna be enough no it's not gonna be enough but at this point he's just trying to get as many kills as he can trying to make it as close as possible and that's usually what you should do there oh look at his chain route though holy crap holy crap wait hold on is he turning this around oh my god this is crazy. This is insane. A huge chain route out of nowhere. This is this is unbelievable. Will they hold? 
We still have a lot of Norwegians to kill, but there's a lot of archers that are just left out here in the open. Norway not really going after those archers, you know, just leaving them up on the wall. I think he went after the archers up here, but all these archers up here are just destroying morale because of the gunfire, the fire arrows, just constantly, relentlessly firing down on these poor dismounted feudal knights. And this is, this is, oh my god, I, I'm still just blown away that Wales still has a chance here. I thought this was going to be like, good game. Amid defeat? Oh my god, Norway amidst defeat. Why would he amid defeat? Wow. Wow. What a very strange turn of events right there. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know... I was so wrong, like, I was like, oh, okay, Norway's winning, like, this is so obviously Norway, they're gonna break through and just kill them in the town center, but I don't know what happened, the, the morale just shattered, it was the most bizarre thing, like, I'm, I'm seeing chain routes here and there, but that was the most bizarre chain route, and again, guys, the expansions, the morale is a lot weaker compared to the vanilla, so when you're getting upgrades, don't necessarily focus on weapon and, and armor focus on getting those chevrons those chevrons will help increase the morale and every little bit will matter so wow okay so this was sent in by the welsh player his name is satchax i think is how you pronounce it i'm sorry if i slaughtered your name uh but you know honestly if we go back here and kind of examine this battlefield i feel like the biggest mistake that the Welsh player made was not, not defending this first layer wall or even pretending to defend it because like I said earlier in this video if you're even if you're pretending you're bluffing is what I like to call it you activate all these towers you make it look like you're gonna hold your ground it makes the the attacker use up his ammo his artillery ammo and so when he pushes to the second layer wall he doesn't have as much ammo to knock down you know the sections of the wall now the biggest mistake that Norway made was not properly using his artillery he got through right he got through these choke points just one choke point because he wasn't defending it and he was able to use pretty much all of his ammo on the second layer wall but he didn't knock down this wall right here which would have been huge I think he would have won the battle if he knocked down more choke points now it was really smart to go through here but I feel like he sent too many units through here I, I don't think it was necessary I think if he sent more units through this wall it would have uh, stretched the defenses for the Welsh player thin and he would have just won I that what an impressive turnaround for the Welsh player. That was really, really fun. I hope you enjoy these 1v1s. Be sure to send in some 1v1s. They're very uh, competitive, I guess you could say. They're very, you know, more balanced, you could argue. Not necessarily, but uh, let's look at his uh, unit stats here. I want to see what unit the best here. 83 by this unit, and I don't even remember if this unit is... A, I think it's an archer unit. So, yeah, he, they were just sitting up on that wall in 93 sitting up on that wall getting a bunch of kills so that's another mistake Norway made not going after those archers if you if you have an opportunity to go up that hill or not hill that wall and kill the archers just standing there getting easy shots go after them take that opportunity because you need to get rid of them so all right guys I hope you guys learned some stuff I hope you enjoyed this strange turnaround I did not expect that whatsoever I was so confident that Norway would win this but what a battle what a turnaround and uh, well done to all the players. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this battle. It was a short one, but nonetheless, a very epic one. So I'll see you next time.